Well, hey, YouTube, it's M.I. Gardner, and today I decided to do something completely new that I think a lot of people have, would like to do but don't know how to do. And today I'm actually going to show you how to tap a maple tree to make your own maple syrup at home. And maple syrup is really, really expensive, but once you know all the work that goes into it, you'll kind of respect the price a little bit. I know I did. And um, so I'm going to be tapping this maple tree behind me, and there's a few rules and kind of do's and don'ts to tapping maple trees. So I'm gonna run you through those really quick and then we can get started with actual how to to do it. Because I think if you don't know the rules, you're gonna screw something up and you could potentially kill a tree. So you gotta make sure you know the rules and just the general kind of tree courtesy, if you will, to tapping maple trees. So I'm gonna go through that and then we'll get started. All right, so this is a hard maple tree. Now, you don't wanna tap soft maple trees. You don't wanna tap uh, Japanese maple trees or really uh, anything but the hard maple because the hard maple will produce a really sweet sap for you and the hard maple is defined by this really tight bark that holds just really close to the uh, to the main tree here and eventually you know when it gets older it starts flaking off a little bit but the maple tree has these kind of sections that you'll see and a soft maple which I'll show you in a second does not have these um, these like kind of little individual blocks almost of bark built on to the tree. It's all just a smooth, just kind of thin wavy cracks as you'll see. And this is an example of a soft maple. Now when you see the soft maple, as you can see, there's no blocks, there's no bark. It's just pretty smooth with some very small, just kind of mini chip-like bark. It's not its not like the other kind of flaky, large chunked bark that you see. And this is a soft maple. This does not make good maple syrup. Now, the best way to tap a maple tree is to, once you find your hard maple, you want to look at the south-facing side. Now, the south-facing side gets quite a bit of shade during midday, so I typically will go in between um, the east and the south. So, you know, this portion of the tree. So that's why I chose this section because it's going to get the most amount of sun because the optimal time to actually tap your maple trees is February and March. When your nights get in the high 20s and the days get in the high 30s to low 40s. That's when the sap is running the best and that's when you're going to get the most um, maple sap for the time that you're spent tapping your trees. So I'm going to actually go through kind of some uh, tapping rules now. When you tap a tree, you don't want to tap a maple tree that's less than 18 inches in diameter. And the way you can tell the diameter of your tree is by taking one of those flexible measuring tapes that the seamstresses use to measure your waistline and whatnot. You want to wrap that all the way around the tree and then divide that by two and that's your diameter of your tree. So anything below 18 inches you want to wait to until it gets bigger or find a different tree. And anything over 18 inches you're allowed one tap per tree. This tree is 39 inches in diameter. It's a huge tree, it's a massive tree. So with 39 inches, I'm allowed six taps. And that is the most that you're gonna to wanna to tap a tree, no more than six. It doesn't matter if you have a tree in 100 inches in diameter. You don't wanna tap a tree more than six taps. All right, so before you start tapping your tree, you're going to want to get a bit that is 5 16 inch. This is a little bit smaller because I'm actually gonna drill a pilot hole first, and then I actually have my 5 16 bit right here and you want to make a mark you don't want to go into the tree any more than one and a half inches deep otherwise you start going into the heartwood of the tree and that's going to uh, allow for diseases to get in the tree and potentially kill it which is another kind of common courtesy thing that you want to do to your tree you want it to heal because the, the hole will be small enough that it won't hurt the tree and it'll just heal right over so i have marked one and a half inches right here and then on my bit, actually, I don't know if you can see it, but I have a, I have a mark right there at one and a half inches. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna find where you're gonna tap your tree. I have my line already set up, and this I'm only doing one tap. I'm just gonna tap it into this for now until I get a five gallon bucket. But um, I just have my tap line set up kind of where I wanna tap it first, and that allows you to see kind of how it's gonna run. And then what you're gonna do is you're just going to, I think I'm actually gonna tap it right here. You're going to stick your drill in straight and tip it down just a little bit 
If your drill has a measuring bubble like mine does, you want to make sure that it's not level. You want it to be slightly slanted upward so the sap runs down. And so I'm just going to slowly start my pilot hole here. That turned out really good. All right, and there's already, wow, there's already lots of sap flown out. All right, so now I actually have my, my 5 16 inch bit in. And there's already sap flowing out of this baby, but I'm just gonna drill this real quick. And just kind of clear away the debris. You don't want a whole lot of debris because it's going to allow for quite a bit of disease to come into the tree. So blow your hole out. Now what you're gonna take is your tap. This is called a spile. You can get these for pretty very cheap online. And the end you want to insert into the tree is the long end and you don't want to insert it all the way you want to insert it just until you hear it thud when you hear it thud it means it hit the end of the hole and you're only going to want to put it in that far any further and it's going to split this it's going to leak and it's also going to hurt the tree so what you're just going to do is you're going to find where you drilled your hole here and insert it take a hammer and just lightly tap Just make sure that the there we go all right and as you can see after about 30 seconds you're gonna have all that fresh maple sap dripping right out of your tap and that is how you make an extremely simple cheap and easy homemade syrup tap all right, thanks for watching you guys. I hope you guys really did enjoy this episode. And I just thought I'd bring you guys along for this because it's something really new and I am going to start doing a whole lot of new stuff this year because you guys are the only reason why I keep making videos and I found this actually really, really fun. I love tapping maple trees and it's a lot of fun. And it's just kind of cool how you can get something totally sweet and amazing right from a tree. So um, it's, uh, it's a great fun activity for kids and family and um, it's a great home, just do it yourself type of fun thing to do as well. So uh, I got this whole kit online for about $14. So it was really, really cheap. And I got 20 feet of line. This is only two feet. So I got uh, 10 times more than that in the house. And I also got along with that five taps. So for 14 bucks with free shipping, you really can't beat it. Um, and I, I definitely would suggest doing it. It's a lot of fun and it's rewarding as well. So um, I'm going to also show you how to boil down the maple syrup. And I did think I would tell you really quick, don't start thinking you're gonna get a ton of it and start a business. It takes 40 gallons of maple syrup sap to make one gallon of actual maple syrup. So <laughs> it's gonna be a while. But it's fun if you're just making breakfast one day and you just want to put it on your pancakes and say, I made that. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this episode. Hope you guys learned something. And this is in my garden reminding you guys to grow big or go home. Talk to you guys later. See ya. Bye.